One of the best aspects of Monster Hunter is the sheer variety of ways to play the game. This is all thanks to the various weapons and sheer amount of builds or sets that you can create. So I'm Dablay with an anti elatrium build for the Switch Axe in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now the main purpose of an anti build is to create a set that is made to counter a specific monster in the game. In this episode we're looking at countering Elatria, providing hunters with two builds to take on the Blazing Black Dragon. One safe, one risky. When it comes to the Switch Axe, due to its mobility issues it could be seen as a difficult weapon to use against the Latrion, but with the right skills, as well as weapons that have power element files, you can easily take on the Blazing Black Dragon. So the first build I'm going to cover is the Risky anti elatrion build. This build, much like other Risky builds featured in this series, makes use of the full Safi Jiva armor set, providing us with a ton of DPS, but at the risk of draining our health and leaving us vulnerable. So for this build you'll need the Safi Crested Crown Beta, the Crested Chest Beta, the Crested Van Braces Beta, Crested Belt Beta and Crested Boots Beta. I'm also using a Blaze Charm 5 as well as using a Fire Weapon and for my weapon I'm using the Kiar Axe King. This has a Health Regen augmentation and then an Elemental Up augmentation attached to it. As for the custom mods, I've simply gone for increasing the weapon's elemental rating. Of course, you can swap this weapon out for a different elemental weapon if you so wish, but if you do, remember to also swap out the blaze charm to match whatever new element you are using. As for the specialist tools, these are down to personal preference. Now, when it comes to the jewels, you've got a lot to play around with here. First of all, I've gone for a blaze jewel to max out the fire attack of this build. Of course, like I said, if you were using a different element, then you would replace the blaze jewel to match whatever new element you were using. I've then gone for vitality jewels for health boost, a resistor jewel to max out blight resistance, expert jewels for some critical eye, evasion jewels to max out evade window, jumping jewels for evade extender, a sharp jewel for protective polish, and finally you have a jewel to play around with to which I've gone for a destroyer jewel for a point in the part breaker skill. As for the jewels and the mantles I've simply gone for protection and maintenance jewels. So if you've done what I've done here you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina which will be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables you have an attack of 1068 with a little bit of white sharpness. You have 100% affinity. This is with the true dragon vein awakening buff in effect and you have a massive fire rating of 1410 with power element files. The reason the elemental rating is so high is this screenshot was captured whilst the switch axe was in sword form which increases the elemental rating. Normally in axe form this elemental rating would be around 970 with true dragon vein awakening in effect. As for your defence you have a decent defence of 1081 that is strong against fire, water, thunder and ice but unfortunately weak to dragon. As for the skills, first of all you have critical eye at level 7. Critical eye is a skill that increases the base affinity of a build. You have fire attack level 6 increasing the fire rating and damage of this build. Of course if you were using a different weapon with a different element you would replace fire attack to match whatever new element you were using. So if you were using ice weapon it would be ice attack level 6. Anyway you have evade window level 5. Evade window is a very useful defensive and quality of life skill especially for the switch axe. One of the main issues with the switch axe is its mobility. It's very slow and although you can move yourself around with the weapon's various moves its main form of movement is rolling and bunny hopping. With Evade Window, it basically increases the invulnerability frames we have when performing these Evade maneuvers. And with Evade Window at level 5, it means that we can pretty much dodge any of Elatrion's attack by rolling and bunny hopping. You can pretty much even roll or hop into attacks and not get hit by them with Evade Window at level 5. It really does help the Switch Axe when it comes to the Elatrion encounter. Anyway, you have Health Boost level 3, allowing our health to get to that maximum of 200. You have Blight Resistance level 3, allowing us to ignore all elemental blights, very useful for when taking on a Latrion. You have Critical Boost level 3, increasing our damage when our attacks crit a monster, but this only applies to the raw portion of our attack, so the attack value. It doesn't do anything for the elemental value. Anyway, you have Evade Extender level 3, another useful skill, especially for the Switch Axe. Again, it counters the slow mobility issues by allowing us to dodge further distances. Anyway, you have Part Breaker level 1. Part Breaker increases the chances of breaking monster body parts, so it's useful when it comes to breaking the Latrion's horns. Anyway, you have Protective Polish level 1, which is a wonderful skill that allows us to put a protective coating over our sharpness gauge, preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. This is applied after we sharpen the weapon, so this counters the small amount of white sharpness we have. Anyway, you have Critical Element level 1, which, again like Crit Boost, increases our elemental damage whenever our attacks crit a monster. So it doesn't apply to the raw portion this time, it's the elemental portion. Anyway, finally when you're wearing the mantles you have Divine Blessing level 2, which gives us a chance at taking reduced damage when we take a hit from a monster, and you'll have Tool Specialist level 2, which reduces the cooldown on our specialist tools. 
these are pretty much a personal preference although i will say divine blessing is very useful when you're wearing the rocksteady mantle now when it comes to the set bonus you only have one of them which is the Safi Jeeva seal true dragon vein awakening true dragon vein awakening is a buff that kicks in whenever your weapon is drawn when you have your weapon out it will grant us 40 percent base affinity as well as give us an extra 150 elemental rating or if we were using an element weapon it would grant us an extra 120 element rating but there is a downside to all of this with each swing of the weapon regardless of if it connects with a monster or not it drains a small portion of our health leaving a red portion of health on our health bar so with each swing this red portion gets bigger and bigger and if we take a hit it can potentially cause us to cart but should you constantly attack a monster after a set number of hits, a heal will be activated by the true Dragon Vein Awakening, restoring the health that the buff drained from us. So as always, it's a risk reward armor set. So there we have it, that is the anti Alatrion risky switch axe build I'd recommend. But of course, every build out there has pros and cons. The pros for this build include its high elemental damage output. Especially when you're utilizing sword attacks, it means that you can easily power down the monster thanks to the high elemental rating we have, as well as the various affinity based skills as well. The other pro is its evade window. Now, evade window, I may have a little bit of a bias for, but when it comes to the switch axe, having an evade window is incredibly useful and really helps when it comes to taking on a Latreon. As long as you're not getting greedy with your attacks, so you attack two or three times and then you dodge the incoming attack, rinse and repeat, you should be able to easily bring down the monster. And the final pro is the True Dragon Vein Awakening set, which provides us a ton of extra DPS buffs. But unfortunately, there are cons. The biggest con for this build is the true Dragon Vein Awakening health drain, which can put you at risk and which is pretty much the reason why this build is rated as a risky build. This is countered slightly by the health regen augmentation on our weapon, but it's still something to be mindful of. And the other con for this build is unfortunately there are sharpness issues as we only have a small chunk of white sharpness and even though we have protective polish it means there'll be periods where we do have to dip into blue sharpness but it's not much of an issue with the switch axe so long as we're using sword attacks as they have a natural mind's eye effect to them so they won't bounce off a monster's hide but regardless this is my personal favorite switch axe build to use against the latrion it's powerful and thanks to evade window and evade extender it makes the hunt feel easy with the switch axe which brings us on to the next build, which is the safe anti-Elatrion build. This is again a high elemental DPS anti-Elatrion build, but doesn't come with the health drain found on the previous build, making it a little bit more safer to use. So for this build, you'll need the Kulvtroth's Fury Beta, the Kaiser Mel Beta, the Kaiser Vambraces Beta, the Kaiser Coil Beta, and the Bracadium Grease Beta. I'm also using an Evasion Charm 5, and for my weapon, I'm using the Kiar Axe Stream. This has a health regen augmentation and then an elemental up augmentation. As for the custom upgrades, again, I've gone for increasing the weapon's elemental rating. As for the specialist tools, these are down to personal preference. Now, when it comes to the jewels, you've got a fair few to play around with here. Firstly, I've gone for frost jewels to max out the ice attack skill. Of course, if you were using a different weapon with a different element, you would replace the frost jewels to match whatever new element you were using. I've then gone for expert jewels for some critical eye, resistor jewels for blight resistance, vitality jewels for health boost, and you have a jewel to play around with, to which I've gone for a mind's eye jewel to make sure that the axe attacks don't bounce off of Elatrion's hide when we reach blue sharpness. As for the jewels on the mantles, these are down to personal preference, to which again, I've gone for protection jewels and maintenance jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you should have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina. When you're on hunt and taking all your relevant consumables, you have a raw attack of 1005 with a decent chunk of white sharpness. You have 55% base affinity, which can easily be 100% so long as you're attacking monster weak points, especially if they've been tenderized through clutch claw attacks first. You have an ice elemental rating of 860 with power element files. These stats were captured whilst the weapon was in axe form. If we were in sword form, the elemental rating would be 1240. And you have an Oki defense of 1003 that is strong against fire and thunder, neutral against dragon, but unfortunately weak to water and ice. Now, as for the skills, first of all, you have critical eye at level 7, you have ice attack at level 6. Of course, again, as always, if you were using a different elemental weapon, you would replace ice attack to match whatever new element you were using. Again, we've gone for evade window at level 5. For the switch axe, I kind of feel this is essential, as we talked about in the first build. You have health boost level 3, blight resistance level 3, weakness exploit level 3. Weakness exploit is a skill that increases our affinity so long as we're attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through clutch claw attacks first, this increase to our affinity is even greater. Weakness exploit at level 3 can potentially provide us an extra bonus 50% affinity. Anyway, you have blast attack level 2, a byproduct of the armor. It does nothing for this build whatsoever. 
you have heat guard level 1, another byproduct that prevents damage when we're in hot areas such as the lava zones in the guiding lands or elders recess. Anyway, you have latent power level 1, another byproduct but is kind of a useful skill. Latent power is a buff that kicks in whenever we've been fighting a monster for a set amount of time or we've taken enough damage from a monster. When it kicks in, it grants this bonus affinity as well as reduced stamina consumption. Anyway, you have free meal level 1, again another byproduct of the armor we're using. Free meal gives us a chance of not consuming a potion or other item when we eat it. You have mind's eye level 1, which prevents our attacks from bouncing off monsters' hides. This really only applies to axe attacks when we've dipped into blue sharpness, as the sword attacks already have a natural mind's eye effect to them. You also have critical element level 1, and when we're wearing our mantles you have divine blessing level 2 and tool specialist level 2. As for the set bonus, you only have one of them, which is Teostra's Technique, Mass is Touch, which prevents any sharpness loss when we crit a monster. And as this build could easily reach that 100% affinity, so long as you're attacking monster weak points, then you should see next to no sharpness loss whatsoever with this build. So there we have it, that is the safe anti alatron build I'd recommend. But of course, even this comes with pros and cons. The first pro for this build is it's decent at dealing elemental damage to monsters. Even though it's not as strong as the previous build, it's still strong enough to easily power down a Latrion and get the hunt done. On top of that, it also again comes with Evade Window, adding to the Switch Axe's quality of life and defensive aspects by being able to hop through pretty much all of Latrion's attacks, bar its ultimate of course. And then finally, the last pro is that this build does not have to worry about sharpness whatsoever. This is thanks to Master's Touch and the fact that we can easily have 100% affinity. But unfortunately there are cons. One of the biggest cons for this build is that you need to tenderize monsters to get that 100% affinity, which can be tricky against the Latrion as you only have very small windows in which to tenderize monster body parts. And the other con is that unfortunately this build really works best with Kiar weapons. If you're not using the Kiar weapon, then your DPS will be lower because you won't have critical element and critical element works wonders when you have that really high affinity rating as this build has. But regardless, if you're looking for a strong build to use against Latrion and you don't want to worry about health drains found on risky builds or worry about builds that have sharpness issues, then this is one I'd strongly recommend. It can easily take on the monster quite effectively. So there we have it, those are two builds that I can recommend for taking on Latrion with the Switch Axe. Now of course as you farm the monster more and more you'll get Latrion gear and weaponry, which will allow you to take on the hunt a little bit more easily, as these weapons have very high elemental ratings and defenses. But until then, these builds will work just fine. So until next time, I've been Dabblade, bringing you anti Latrion builds for the Switch Axe in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.